Yes, I am ready. Hello and welcome back to Two Hairy Men in a Mercedes. Um, this time, as you probably saw, we're doing a little vlogumentary on the first generation rattling ML Mercedes, M Class, the W163. slightly off topic already as we usually do yes. um, my wife recently purchased one of the last Volkswagen City Golfs and watch our documentary really really good and the parcel shelf at the back also rattled so I had a slight City Golf flashback now yes. when the uh, your parcel shelf starts rattling there are a lot of rattling things in this car and there's also a nasty nickname for this car which we'll get to we've got some crib notes yes. to tell you all about the ML I only learned this morning on Wikipedia mm -hmm. which isn't always correct that Mercedes wanted to replace the G-Wagon, the Geländewagen. So much like Porsche, who were trying to replace the 911 with the 928, a yeah. car came along and they went, oh, hang on, we'll keep the other one, and it turned out to be the best idea ever. Um, they got into cahoots or into a joint venture with Mitsubishi Motors to build an SUV in the early 90s, but that fell through. And then they decided to invest in an SUV luxury 4x4 like this car. And the ML was conceptualized, designed, and they even decided quite early on, I think in 93 or 94. So let me see. To build the factory. Well, they choose, in the words of um, Forrest Gump, Alabama. Alabama. Um, in 1993 as the location. Yes. And according to my crop notes, which I'm not using, yep. um, the factory was bought in 1994. Yes. So they, well, from a preparation point of view, they'd already basically prepped quite an advance yes so it does fall in line if you look at the fact that they in were in cahoots with Mitsubishi a bit earlier unsuccessfully uh, but obviously it was based bought during the Daimler Chrysler era yes um, so production started in early 97 I believe, yes right? and the early ones were even more rapidly and had even worse worse plastics so they had a nasty nickname do you know what it's called that I can't actually remember it's the Alabama trash can because of the rattling. Well, it's, it's, it's a bit unfair because yeah. the rattling plastic was very much because of the multitude of Jeep Grand Cherokee parts that were yes. inside. Uh, unconfirmed, I can tell you, we will get to that later, maybe in a walk around, that there are so many non-Mercedes things on this. This is related to the Grand Cherokee. Yeah. yeah. Also, uh, our good mechanic friend Rob. Yes. Hi Rob. He once alleged that these cars were all blessed by priests on the production line, but I, I couldn't find any. Okay, it sounds it sounds very very. Um, Alabama is a very Christian state. No, not that. I'm obviously I'm a massive nerd. So in Warhammer forty thousand, which Henry Cavill. Hopefully you are watching this. You've lost um, me. <laughs> um, he plays the Witcher in the Netflix series. Henry I'm Cavill. Not smile. Ah, all right. Well, Henry Cavill, Warhammer forty k is a turn based tabletop. And they have in the game in the books you have priests that place yep. more mechanical things. Yeah. So that's why, obviously, a bit of a tangent as we do. Yes. Um, we also bless cars in South Africa. Um, cars are also blessed in India. There's a whole yes. ritual and everything for good luck and for always happy motoring. I think in South Africa we bless a car so it doesn't get stolen. Shame. Or driven out of the showroom window. Shall we? Oh, that was the polo driver. Shall we insert that clip? No. no. I hope you guys can see us with the sun there. Is it, is it working? If not, we'll edit out the sun. We don't yes. know how yet, but we'll make a plan. The sound should work, and I'll just put in, I don't know, That's fine. footage well, of fluffy kittens. Yeah, we can say we, it was, we were extras in the scene of Touched by an Angel. Yeah. So, obviously, I want to get to what the ML actually is. It's a yes. luxury... Uh, is, it, is, is it an SUV? A sports utility vehicle? Is it a 4x4? Because I believe every W163 was permanent four-wheel drive. You didn't, they get, were. you didn't get them in rear wheel drive. No. They were permanent all wheel drive. They have a low range. I'm not sure if all of them did. Do you know? As far as I understand, they all had low range. Do you know? If you do, please type in the comments and confirm that they all have. There's our low range button. I know on the later ones that likes to break a lot. On this car, we've tested it once, it worked. But we have never ever used it because this is a 5 litre V8. Why would you need low range for anything ever? We've been up mountains and we 
we don't need that. Well, it, it, it depends because um, I don't know in other countries, but in South Africa, if you go to off-road trails, they they classed by number. Uh, is so for example, example really slow. Yeah. So okay. for example, gotcha. a class two off-road trail is a lot easier to navigate than, yes. for example, a class four. So in theory, if you were really wanting to bundu bash with it, you would yeah. most likely at some point V8 or not, you would have to use the low range, yeah. especially in things like mud and clay and those where or rock crawling where you need yes. very low range. Okay, so all of them had um, permanent wheel drive, but they also had an electronic um, traction system because they did not have mechanical locks on the center or the transfer case or the rear or front diffs. It was electronic. Four ETS or something? Yes, 40, four ETS traction system. Yes. Um, which I think I've put in there, there was an anecdote from Car Magazine, the erstwhile um, South African most famous motoring publication. When they got one of these on test, they couldn't get up a slippery slope, probably gravel or something. Yeah. And eventually they phoned the press fleet and they said, oh, what are you doing? Oh, well, we're doing this and we're trying that. And they said, just floor it, put your foot down, go. The car will sort it out. And as much as that goes against the grain of any proper 4x4 enthusiast or expert who wants to plan their lines, you just floor it and let the car sort it out. And it worked. So unfortunately, in terms of 4 by 4 this is one of those cars that will try and do the work for you. Although there is a traction off button here, ESP off. Yeah, so I guess you can turn that off if you want some wheel slippage. Don't know why you would want to go in an SUV to turn off the traction control. Um, uh, my dad had a British 4x4 with one of these new systems in it, and it stood on the beach going click clack click clack. It wouldn't move because the traction was shifting. Uh, and the, so we okay. turned it off and dug ourselves out of it. Uh, no, that's, that's fair. That would be the, the only. No, I was referring to maybe if you wanted to do stupid things. Uh, it's, it, it's, it's still a two-ton plus. Can vehicle. you do donuts in one of these? And we're not going to do that because it's very top heavy. <laughs> yes, and this is your wife's car. She will kill you. This this is this is our family hauler. Uh, we'll get to that bit just now. You can see the baby seat. We also have um, my wife's scarf. Somewhere up here is my daughter's pair of sunglasses. And for health and safety purposes, obviously, his daughter is not currently in the back of no. the vehicle while we might possibly hoon it. Yes. Um, <laughs> anyway, back to the ML. Yes. So, um, four-wheel drive, they had petrol and diesel. And diesel engines. The petrol engines were all naturally aspirated. The diesels were all turbocharged. Yes. We. I recently learned there was a four-cylinder four petrol. I know. I got really, really the excited. ML230, which really is like your favorite engine. M111. M111. I won, Please watch our documentary. Yes. As much as I love an M111, I think it's the greatest four-cylinder created by man or God. I didn't know we got that. And was that a manual or auto? Um, let me check. It actually does. Five-speed manual. Yes. Because the 270 CDI, which is a great engine with many problems, that you got in an automatic or manual. I don't think we in South Africa we didn't get the 230. We, we did get this. We did get the 270, but not in manual. We no. haven't seen one. And only in facelift. And we also didn't get what was probably the best one when it was new, the 400 CDI, the turbo diesel V8. Was that US market only no, or US and Europe? EU market only. Apparently. Oh, okay. Because um, our diesel is like 50 ppm. Yes. The best that you can get. Our diesel back then was 500 ppm. Yes. Which um, means it's got like twigs and insects floating in it. And those and modern and diesels couldn't do that. Yes. And if you're watching as an American, possibly body parts from Jimmy Hoffa. We've gotten off topic again. We do that. I think that's why people right. watch us. What, what's uh, the next one for the ML? Um, air suspension. No. No air suspension, no double clutches. Most of them were five-speed automatic, which is the 722.6. Just give it a service one mm -hmm. so in a while, and it lasts, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Forever. It does. Yeah. Um, Just. Uh, but we were still... On the ML. Yes. Okay, so when it launched, there were various engines, and uh, the pre-facelift, the... When did the facelift come out? Okay, so according to this... So the easiest way to spot a pre-facelift is because the window switches are up here. I don't know if you can see this part here, in the uh, just behind the gear lever. This is where the window switches would be like, in, as in like rocker switches that you pull and push. Yeah. Um, the indicators are still on the side of the car, 
and when they were facelifted in 2001, they upgraded the bumpers, the lights, the indicators moved into the mirrors, or if you're in America, mirrors. So the outside, the exterior mirrors will have uh, turn signals in them, and um, they did upgrade most of the engines. Mm -hmm. the, the petrol ones became bigger and better, and the, I think the diesel stayed, stayed pretty much the, the same. The diesel stayed pretty much the same. When did that 400 come out? That uh, might have been an 01. So 400 production years, 2001 to 2005. So the, the 400 came with the facelift. Yes. The 55 came with the facelift, but according to that, it started in 2000. 2000. So maybe there were pre-facelift ML 55s. I haven't seen any yet. Could you confirm if you can? I've matter. only seen 2001 and up. Mm. They also didn't run until 2004, like this car's in 2004. I think the last ones were 05. Yes. The ML55 already stopped in 02 or 03. Oh, it stopped oh. before the production run. Mm -hmm. And we've skipped over your favorite part. What was the most famous movie cameo as the car was being launched for the 1997 movie? The Last World Jurassic Park. Yes. I want to build a replica. So, again, according to Wikipedia, they built three different versions, two models of each. Two are at Universal Studios. One is in Alabama at the factory, I believe. The Mercedes Museum has one. I might have seen it. If I have a picture of it from my 2010 visit, I'll put that in. Um, so that means one or two are floating around. Oh, Jeff Goldblum has one. Well, he got he got a complimentary one, but they gave him an ML320. Shame. Couldn't they spring for like a 430? I like Jeff Goldblum. He's not a, like a B-rate actor or anything. I like a 320. They are underpowered, I know. Actually but I like them. 320 is a good car. It just, it, it's a bit underpowered, yes. But good. it still has a 112, so yes. it will go on forever. With maintenance, yeah, a couple of hundred thousand kilometers or miles. So, right. Um, so MLs were always five door or four door, what do you want to call it? Five door. The spare wheel moves around. <laughs> it does. If at this car has no spare wheel on the back, we'll put footage in now when we don't walk around. Um, the spare wheel is under the car, and it's what we call in South Africa a Maori biscuit. I'm now going to put a picture of a Maori biscuit in. It's a euphemism for a space, space saver. saver wheel. We actually checked it, it was full of dust. But never been used. Never been used, so we put it back. We didn't clean it because it just gets full of dust and mud anyway. And um, that thing is under the car because Boot we, space. we don't have the seven seats. If the car has the seven seats, the wheel gets put on the back of the car with a big chrome um, bar that runs with it. I yeah. like those, although I hate the visibility. But if you see an ML163 with the spare wheel on the back, mounted on the door... It's a seven-seater. It's a seven-seater. However... The 55 is also different. In SA, I yes. don't know about the rest of the world, even if you had a five-seater like this, yes. you could, as an optional extra, have the spare wheel mounted on the rear oh, with very all right. the I recently learned that when we went to the, to the Kalahari with this car I've got lots of footage which I can put in now we actually took a full tire because in the Kalahari the, the roads can be quite treacherous and you can burst the tire um, so I learned like you just said you could get the five seater but order that extra wheel to have a full size spare yes and then coming to the ML55 did you know that that had an inboard so the 55s all have like a covering in in the um, trunk cargo area. Very Pajero-esque. Yes, or like a, a T you would have. So yes. the whole wheel is inside the car, in molded into the side. Uh, what else? Boot space is 630 liters. Liters yes. and upwards. The rear seats fold. Um, there was no trim or spec. So no elegance or no. avant-garde or esprit like the wheels we have. They just... Um, I, I believe there's a luxury pack or a luxury option. This car is VIN, if you put it into a, like a, a VIN decoder. The data card that comes out, there's a luxury or elegance pack. Not elegance, it's it's not a trim line, but you could, I don't know, it's probably the leather that we got with South Africa. But these didn't come with cloth or MB techs, even overseas, did they? Under correction, but I think your pre facelift did have an MB Text option. Okay, we might have just stumped ourselves again. Yeah. But I'm like speaking under correction. I am speaking under correction. Um, oh, things like options. Yes. Could you get one with an AMG kit? I have seen AMG kits, so it would 
would be a 430 or a 270 with a full 55 kit. And is that aftermarket? Did someone do that or did it come with it? That would be actually quite interesting. Once again, in the comment section, it's, it's weird. As much as we love MLs, there are one or two interesting facts that we're not 100% sure of. Um, yeah, um, I was not the biggest fan of the ML. I respected them. I also thought of them as a bit rattly. I think that was, as I go through this hole, that was justified. <laughs> but it turns out they're very hardy, and we'll get to the pros just yeah. now. If you look after them, they, they seem to be good cars. Also, we're going to answer the question, we're supposed to ask that in the beginning, should you buy one? Yes. <laughs> All right, yes. what's next? Um, so, Weirdly enough, we're starting with cons. We're starting with the veggies first. Yes, veggies first as I take the hat. So what are the cons on this car? Um, as with any Mercedes-Benz from the late 90s to early 2000s, wiring might become a problem at some stage. The fuel gauge in this car does the same as every 90s Merc. It, it shows you something but we don't trust it. We haven't run out of fuel. Again, I can show a reel of me starting my wife's car and it like bing, hardly moves. She's learned that this thing lies. The fuel gauge doesn't work properly. I've learned with Mercedes-Benz of that era, yeah. seeing as we own quite a few of them, yes. is that the moment it hits quarter, don't risk it. Yeah. Go put in fuel. Facelift 211. Is it a 220? Might be. Looking for one of those. Sorry, off topic. Um, yes, wiring issues. This car, when we bought it, had a few issues. Uh, maintenance, that, that was deferred, we had all of that done. But the indicator had no intermittent wipe. It only had normal and full speed, but no intermittent. It was broken. And Rob, our mechanic friend, looked at it and said, mm, we'll make a plan at some point, as you do. When we came back from the Kalahari, it worked again. After all that rattling, and let me put a clip in. All that rattling. Hours and hours and hours of torture, the thing came back to life. It mended itself. Must well, have been a loose wire. Well, but then technically that's a pro then. You should that's buy an pro. email because it fixes itself. Saves you money. <laughs> um, so wiring wiring is an issue. Yes. Um, and it, so if you're going to buy one, what should you look for? Stuff that doesn't work. Windows that don't work. Window switches. The radios. The something. Most of the electric. Try yeah, so, all the buttons. Yeah, so electrics, electrics are things that are going to go. I prefer, in this case, you and I disagree slightly on this, I would rather than suggest getting a pre-facelift because there are less electronics in it. Really? Compar in comparison to a, a facelift. Oh, okay, yeah. Um, which brings us back to options. Uh, some of them, this one has the command system, which dates the car quite a bit. I would have preferred a normal DIN radio, a single DIN. But um, that was one of the options. Bose sound system was an option, which again, I would not recommend because it's all fiber optic. Yeah. And fiber optic, you can't splice. We want to get a backup camera and a Bluetooth, and we can't. We have to rip out the whole system or rewire a new one into the car, which I guess you could. It's a, it's a cheap old car, but that is one of the cons, is that, as you said, the electrics and some of the facelift ones and the option cars can and have then, stuff that makes your life a bit difficult. Yeah. And then another con, and it's, it's, it's not nice to say, but it is true. Because it shares so much interior parts and switch gear from a Jeep Grand Cherokee, they are very plasticky. Um, they are hardy, but the problem is when they break, they, they don't break well, if that makes sense. Yeah. It's, I don't know where the car's microphone is. I also think it's, it's not on the quality. This doesn't feel like a Mercedes. If you put any other badge on this car, I would think it's a Kia or Hyundai from that era. And it doesn't look very pretty. I mean, it's not ugly, but it's a very plain looking car. <clears throat> um, it's, so it's yeah, this- very mundane. I don't know. Put it like this. Is it is it when it came out, did I go wow as a, as a eight, nine year old child when it came out? No, probably not. But now that I've gotten older, I do like the fact that it is actually understated. Yes. Um, and it, 
it has actually aged well. And what I mean by... Thank you. Um, that was close. Yes. <laughs> we should have had the dash cam. Someone almost rolled into us. <laughs> With a white Corolla, which would have been embarrassing. Where was she own. going? I don't know. Anyway. Well, she's very far from Cryfontaine, so... Yes. Anyway, yeah. Um, um, the looks... They've aged well. And what I mean by that is, if I, if, for example, apart from the fact that Toby's slightly dusty, um, Toby... He always is. This is the name, the car's yeah. name, Toby. Sorry. I um, thought because he toes, but my wife said no because it's short, and Toby's uh, a short name. Um, so it works for everyone. Your first generation ML, like this one, that's been well looked after and well kept. If you go into a parking lot outside yeah. a shopping center and you see a neat one, the first thing that comes to mind is not it's 26 years old mm. I do, it doesn't give me the impression of a 26 year old Mercedes okay. Okay. Um, so I think it's age well yes it's understated you can make the argument it's slightly bland and if someone pitches up in one of these I'm going to think one of two things either it's old money they've had it forever or two it's someone thrifty like us who's bought it and is keeping it running because they know how to keep an old car going mm -hmm. and it's excellent value because that's another con they have no value whatsoever bad news if you have one they want to get rid of it great news if you want to buy one they're cheap as chips aren't they very very cheap you can okay yeah. in south african money you can pick up a decent ml 430 yes for about fifty-five thousand rand. So you're looking, and in UK that's, speak, that's about two thousand two hundred pounds. That's what we paid, just over fifty. Um, it's, and then it's what, laughable. And then dollar-wise, you're looking about two thousand eight hundred dollars. Yeah, um, and that's exactly the thing that we did. There's your buyer's advice already. You buy it cheap, and you budget to maintain the car. You have a very good car for very little money. Yeah, the thing is, the good news is, it's not the engine and the gearbox you need to worry about. Um, engine and gearbox, it's tried and tested engine and just They just need servicing. They just need servicing. And then another con... It's not really fair to call it a con. The fuel consumption. But it's not really fair to say because if you purchase a Mercedes-Benz ML turbo diesel or petrol, you should have known what you're getting yourself in for the moment yeah. you bought it. Naturally, the turbo diesels will be better on the fuel uh, consumption. But the, it's a heavy car. That's that's a negative as well. But they more SUVs are, of that era. They are two tons and up. Thing is, it's 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 competition. If you want to go apples for apples, BMW X5, Porsche Cayenne, yeah. Volkswagen Touareg, which not is much of a difference. Yeah. No, the fuel consumption. Even the old your Land Cruiser. Your, coming up your to Toyota Land Cruiser. Very heavy car. Or what the Lexus equivalent yeah. was the LX470. Yes. Um, they're heavy and because it is we forgot that part steel chassis it's a it's a ladder frame chassis with a body on top right which actually it's does, a monocoque body on a ladder frame chassis which actually does give a surprisingly good off-road capability for yes. what it is yeah. in comparison to i'd rather use this on a reasonable off-road course than i would use a bmw x5 or a glc yeah no that's not happening yeah um but yeah the cons <sighs> It's basically just, they are heavy, electrics, trim, they are rattly. It is an old Mercedes, for instance, one of the things that this car did, it immediately blew up its power steering pump, but we got a pirate pot, it's a bit noisy, but it works. Then, um, the air conditioner let go, we had it regassed, didn't work, we put a new condenser in, didn't work, we had the pump redone, didn't work, and eventually we just did the whole system, shall I floor it? Yeah, why not? That sound good though. 6,200 RPM. Good old M113. This is the weakest 5 litre they ever made. <laughs> but, sufficient power. Except the fuel gauge just went off. Well, in comparison to our SLCs, this is still economical. Yeah. Um, Something will go wrong. 
and again, there's the buyer's advice, stay on top of it. If you don't, the car will be non-functioning within a year or two. Yeah. Something. The thing is that it depends. And what I mean by that is, um, you also need to know what your budget is. And you need to also determine what is important. So for example, if the air conditioning no longer works, we replace the entire system. Yes. Right? But, but you know what? We need the car. Yes. We had to have it done. And it's still, judging by the price of the car, it's not that much. And if you take into account, if I had to go power steering pump air conditioning, I think the, air, the, the power steering pump is a more important mechanical yes. thing to repla yeah. repair and replace. As this example, without air power steering is almost undrivable. <laughs> But, but, but you would, I just think. Without air conditioning, you can still open a window. Yeah, we did. We, walked, we drove around for a few days. It was summer, unfortunately, when the whole system let go. Eventually, we knew that we had to do all of it. But yeah, you're quite right. That, that you can live without if you're building a fun 4x4 off roader, which I'm happy to say, much like the early Cayennes, people are buying these and lifting them and having fun with them. Yeah. Having big woo woo tires on them. Yeah, why not? So for example, my, my, my childhood dream is I want to purchase a pre-facelift ML430 and do a The Lost World Jurassic Park replica. Why not? Wrap it, do it's the bull cheap. bar. Do it. <laughs> and the production numbers. I'll, I'll put it on our chart, which we've been using. Production numbers are not that low. The, the least built one, the most rare ML160, I think is a little four pot, isn't it? Yeah, 8,640. <laughs> The rest of them are like 60,000, 120 something, whatever. The 430, yes. which I want to use is a bit difficult, is about 50,000. Granted, that's worldwide, so yeah, that's, that's all. if I wanted to, I like the 270 CDI engine. Apart from the injectors, but that's a modern problem with diesels to start off with. I guess. Um, there was 173,000 270 CDIs. You'd actually be okay with your 320. And something I wanted to note, in Southern Africa, the most prevalent, the most ML163s that I see around here are 350s, which that's the 272 engine. No, no, two, that's a 112 engine. It's a 112 engine. The 350 was the bigger version of the 112. Wasn't yes. It? That one is probably the one you want. That one sold the most in South Africa. I speak under correction, that's just my powers of observation. Um, would you agree? Um, and it does have the spare wheel mounted on the back. Yeah. It's absolutely gorgeous. Um, By the way, we are now driving to the stables where my wife has her horse. This is the road. He probably knows it off by heart. Yeah. He's pulling to the left slightly. Uh, she trundles along this little motorway and then goes down a dirt road, which turned into a swamp uh, when we had the floods recently. Oh, good old Toby. I've oh. got a video to show you. It's a river. Toby's loving it. <laughs> we were so happy because the previous car was the reason we replaced it. It was an E430. Oh, I missed that car. Oh, but oh, it, I'm, I'm it, still upset. I wanted to buy that at all for me. But that's the reason we bought this one. We needed a safe family SUV that can bomb around and go on holiday. And so far, the car has not disappointed us at oh, all. I think on that note, it's actually good we can actually move to the pros. Because yes. the cons, once again, the cons are very... We've gone through all the cons. Yes. Yeah. So the pros are very, very simple. Yes. They are affordable to purchase. Right now, you can get them. Free. And if you actually spend some time, you might be able to pick up yes. a very, very nice one. A decent one. Before we go further, um, in Europe, do they rust? Yes. Yes. Okay. So because that's Mercedes con. Benz used water-based paint, but it's a pro. Look for one that is not rusted. Pay good money for it, or if you feel brave enough, buy a rusty one for cheap and fix it up, or don't. Just have and fun. Then, um, what other pros are there to these cars? They are actually surprisingly capable off-roaders. Um, so, for example, if you live on a small holding on the farm or you, you have to 
travel on dirt roads quite often. For mild to medium off-roading. Yes, they are I would agree. Than we've been up a mountain, we've been to the Kalahari, thick sand, or soft sand, heavy corrugations. The car actually drives almost better on dirt than it does on tar. Because the first time I have you ever driven one of these? Yes. Okay, good. Otherwise I would have off it. They they drive a bit like a tank because it's a heavy thing. But when you're on a dirt road, it just glides along beautifully. Very, very nice. And more comfortable than a Toyota, as confirmed by all my in-laws who swapped cars while we were on so far. Yeah. This one's really, really comfortable. Well, I've always had I've always made the argument that nothing drives as comfortably on a dirt road as a Mercedes based, especially an old one. So coming back to your point there, um, mild off-roading, absolutely fine. So if you want to do cross axling 4x4 competitions, this is not the car for no. that. Or if you want to do heavy snow towing, I mean, uh, uh, it depends on what you want to do with it. Yeah, but I think if you if you travel dirt roads quite often, as for example, we that live in the Western Cape in South Africa, we have very, very wet winters, yes. lots of rainfall. Um, it can deal with most mu dirt roads that basically become muddy roads. And um, my wife tows the horse box from, actually she fetches it somewhere else, goes there, picks it up and then goes up here to the Stellenbosch airfield. There's the Stellenbosch District Riding Club, that's where she rides. So it's only a few kilometers and she drives very slowly, but she says this car tows a horse box with two horses in it as if it wasn't even there. Obviously she's very careful and she goes softly or gently on the throttle, but this big heavy car and the big engine very good for towing. Yeah. yeah, and then another pro obviously is okay. I know one or two people might disagree with me in regards to the 270 CDI, but I think most, of, if not all, the engines that it was released with are in general quite reliable as long as you maintain them. Yes. There's no shortage of parts because, luckily, once again, these are engines that have done so much service in other Mercedes Benz models yeah. that there's not a shortage of. Whether it's servicing parts like spark plugs and oil and falters or whatnot, and even more difficult parts to get, yes. or more expensive preventative maintenance type of things, you are able to find. Now, once again, for example, um, the automatic, which is the 722.6, is a very reliable gearbox. Yes. And if you maintain it and you service it, you will get great service. So, mechanically, not, electric, not electrically and not electronically, but mechanically, these are reliable. I will not agree with you on the diesels. You have to know what you're doing, or you have to have a plan to keep those diesels That's going. Because I believe the 400 CDI, which I've never experienced but I'm in love with, it also has its problems. Turbos, injectors, I don't know. But if you know what you're doing, and if you have the skills yourself, a tame mechanic, a good indie, then you should be fine. I wouldn't take one of these to the main dealer. No. They, they don't want these cars. It will be terrifying. And the prices will be You'll die. multiples of what you think it will be. Yes. So find yourself an independent or do it yourself. Then you should be alright. And eyes open, eh? know what you're buying. This is, this is our buyer's advice. You have to maintain it. Uh, I mean, as big as it is, it's still smaller than its, 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 its modern counterpart. It's compact. That's why this one's called Toby, because he's shown so short. He is actually shorter than the E430 W210 in our garage by a substantial margin. And if you put this next to a big, uh, our idea of a pickup truck, a buggy, this is much, much shorter. It's actually quite a compact car. For example, I'm going to be honest, if I look at mo modern comp contemporaries, I think this is about the same size as a Porsche Macan, which is the entry-level Porsche SUV, yeah. and it's the same size. Yeah. I've got a Volvo XC60 tested, we should put it next to that, it's probably the same size. I think the Volvo is actually slightly bigger. <laughs> um, so if you compare the, the new ML, which is referred to as a GLE, oh, yes. it um, is we've huge. Got that. The, the, the ML or M class was changed to GLE. Uh, in the th is it the third generation or was it the second? No, third. Third generation. Yes. Around 2015. I think it's in the uh, beginning. Yes, 2015. 2015 they changed it. Um, because the second gen is a W164 and then the third gen was 165. I assume. I don't know. I didn't actually make those notes. 
Yeah. Uh, where are we now? Yeah, we're still in Pro's actually, which I quite. Um, I shall go towards our favourite parking lot. Yes. With the vacuum leak that's also here, which apparently is fine. These are not the droids you're looking for. Yeah. Well, once again, when it comes to maintenance, it's not that important to do. Um, oh, there's a huge uh, con or a huge negative for these cars. Yes. Mercedes Benz flip key. We only got this car with one key because when people buy a new car, they say, Come, children and wife, let's go to the beach for ice cream with our new car. Give me the spare key in the ocean. People always sell a car secondhand without the spare key. I've only ever found one. We've had this discussion before in other cars. People lose the spare key. No you idea know how why. many, many classic Or the service books. How can you lose that? Or stuff? another thing, jacks. Yes. Why did you remove Why? it? <laughs> what, I, what is it doing outside you, the car? I think every third classic or older Mercedes Benz I purchase to refurbish and sell, like, I have to replace a jack. Where's the jack? Uh, the no, spare no. wheel is there. Yes. The spanner is there. Yes. And if it's a Mercedes Benz with alloy wheels, it will have the steel spare wheel with the shorter studs. Yep. That will be there. But not the jack. The original first aid kit will be in the car, but the the jack is gone. And here's the problem. You can buy a jack. I actually borrowed my mom's jack until I found a second-hand one on Facebook Marketplace for my CLK, I think. Um, on this car, you can't buy a spare key. Well, you can't buy a spare flip key. The company that made it no longer exists. Mercedes-Benz no longer provides it because in my research, I've discovered that the flip key has three functions. One is the flip blade, which is laser cut to the ignition and the lock or whatever. Two, it has an immobilizer inside the thing. It's a little red light. That immobilizes or, or that get, gets the engine to start to actually fire. And the third one is the unlocking system that opens the door. So you've got three systems in one stupid key which nobody can make. You can however, and I still haven't managed to do that, you can go to your dealer with the registration papers and a copy of your ID and you can apply for something called the valet key. Um, its nickname is the Mickey Mouse key because it looks like a Mickey Mouse head. It's got like two little loops on it. That has the cut key for your car. That's why you need all your documents. And the immobilizer for your car. Which means if, please we never ever, but if we do lose this key, we can use that one to unlock the door, get in and start the car. We just can't blip, yeah. remote control, lock or unlock the doors anymore. Oh, because my Mercedes-Benz SLK, also has a flip, which is almost flip. empty. Yes. Yours also has a flip. Yeah, and I also don't have a spare one for you it. You can't get one. I have found a guy that can remake one for no, me. I don't believe that. I've heard it too many times and then they go, oh, that car. Nope. No, the reason I know is because my aunt bought Mercedes-Benz A-Class to sell yeah. and she had a new one made. And the first gen A-Class also has a flip key. That I'd like to see. I would pay good money for that. There are people selling systems that do that, but I haven't bought one yet because you have to buy the whole, mm. it's like a suitcase full of stuff like mine here. Um, right, are we just about done? Because then we're going to park up and walk yeah, around the car. Yeah, one or two little... You can meet Toby, but you've probably seen him already. Yeah, the one or two things is, the one or two, I don't know, quirks. But I think we've discussed that. Oh yes, the quirks. No, we're going to do inside the car just now. Ah. We'll, we'll take the camera and walk around because, for instance, um, this car doesn't have a multifunction steering wheel. Like every other Merc of this era has. This car, the, 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 the um, indicator and wipers, is, it's completely alien. Everything's in the wrong place. Here. Yes. Okay, let's park it here. Or should I park by 4x4 four four parking only? <laughs> you could be funny and park on the grass, but someone's probably shot. Um, no, that is actually, the 4x4s four are supposed to go through here. When the church parking lot fills up, and trust me, it does, then the 4x4s can go through here and onto the grass. That's what it's there for. But we don't need to do that with our noisy power steering. No. And the right. noisy interior fan. Back in a second. Okay. Welcome back. We're now doing quirks and features. Hello, Doug. <laughs> <laughs> this? <No>. This <laughs> is a 2004 Mercedes-Benz ML 500. No, he sounds southern. Suddenly. No, he's not. He's not. He's he's from the northeast. He's from either coast, I believe. Yeah. Now, 
Some of the things that tell me this is not a proper Merc, I've already touched on the steering wheel, literally, which doesn't have any remote controls, which for this area, this is not shared with any other bins. Same as the uh, wiper stalk, which I've just decided or noticed is broken again. <laughs> oh no, there it is. Okay, no, that's good. Um, that is not Mercedes Benz, nor is that. No. The lights for Mercedes must always be here and be a turning knob, right? Yes. Even in this era Even and the one era. after it. Yes. yes. It does. Luck, there's one it's thing. It's got though, auto the, lights and the cruise stuff. control stalk at least is Mercedes Benz. That is pure Mercedes. Sorry, as the sun in the way and it's even got a limiter function I got into that just now um, this is not Mercedes but very welcome cup holders Mercs don't have good cup holders you've got one on that side yes. also every Merc ever has a lockable glove box <clears throat> except this one. Oh, and a class a class you can't lock there yeah, but that's a budget so every premium Mercedes Benz. Oh, 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 also there's that lovely build quality we're talking about these switches are Mercedes. Uh, by the way, optional seven seats would have window switches to tilt the back and seat heaters, which I wish this car had. Yeah. Um, but those are pure Mercedes Benz. That I'm not sure about. That's actually supposed to be there if it's a proper Merc or in the door. Um, no, hold on. My my 202 same here. Oh, right. Is. On the 202, it is down there. Yes, and on, and on the, the 211. Ach, 210, yes. And on the 124. Yeah. So that's actually right. Yeah. That's right. Um, um, the door lock mechanism is also purely Mercedes. But. Look at this thing here, that little, that is probably one of those Japanese unlock lock things. What is that doing there? I think that is a Jeep carryover. Probably from a Jeep carryover, yes. And then um, the hazards lines, the that placement of the hazards. does not belong there. It's it should usually. have a beautiful triangle in the middle, center Mr. Fenter. Um. Low range is being spelt out, which is American. Um, a German car would have an icon or sign or symbol. Yeah, which is weird because I don't know Americans can read. Sorry about that. Also, <laughs> oi! You're being nasty to our audience. <laughs> um, this is unique to the ML. No other Mercedes has this. That is your trip computer. That's kind of cool. Yeah, is your date. There's number zero for good luck. Um, there's our liters. That's the average we're currently doing. Hooray. But we've that's got. That's terrifying. Yeah, it is. Unfortunately, that's what the car does. Yeah, we've, I know. It we've is. had it down to. Um, 10 though or less that's your range which is always wrong that's burr i don't know who burr yeah, is and that's off um that's your sunroof, sunroof controls but how american is this do you know what that is probably for your sunglasses no you glue your gate oh, thing in there yeah. and then you glue it in and when it's closed you press the button and it opens your gate ah uh. American Mercs, all of them would have a better system in it though, but I think this was the, the least fancy one they had and it just came with all MLs wherever they went in the world. Another thing that's not completely Mercedes-Benz, these instruments, they look proper, but they're not. If you know what I mean, I've got some close-up shots, those are smaller than they're supposed to be, that is also, that's supposed to say tank, tank or fuel, yeah. that's supposed to say temp, but it's got icons. That's pure eight, uh, 90s Mercedes. Um, in other ones, I've seen other icons for the, um, what do you call it, for the fuel. And why does the tachometer for the rave car do not have a red line? Only diesels do that, but in all MLs, that doesn't have a red it line. It also doesn't have, if you look at, if you look at the speedometer, yeah, the, um, the, on the Mercedes Benz, I'm gonna obviously come in from yes. this side, you usually have yellow lines. You which do, show, which they're missing. Show um, because that is the yellow lines on the cluster is the highest speed you can do for a gear So if it has one yellow line, let's say at 40. Oh, you mean the little gear lines? Yeah, they disappeared in the 2000s, but you're onto something else. They usually have a marking at 50 mm -hmm. Like a bar or, or like uh, lines that's for the inner speed limit in Europe and This car doesn't have it or these cars don't have it more proof that this is not a proper Mercedes oh, or built with other parts. This is also Mercedes. Very, that's very Mercedes. Yes, but what is it doing there? It's supposed to be here. No. There. Uh -uh. That side. Oh, that side. Yes. Well, whichever. If you look at Mercedes of that era, it's whichever side right you're side. driving on. Yeah. Um, this is sort of Mercedes. There is a cheaper version of this, or, or a lesser version that just has turning knobs. But you didn't get push-button climate control with the display. And then. What else do we have? Ah, she has a nice 12 volt it's over there. Got a 12 volt port down there. 
Uh -huh. This is aftermarket that's so Ah, uh, when people still thing. smoked cigarette lighters. Yes. Yeah. I say people still smoke, I smoke. And like, then this is a double hinged. I do like this. Is, it, is um, yours air conditioned? Receptacle of rubbish. No. Ah. I, don't, I don't think it is. Let me feel. Down. This is the towing hitch adapter unit thing which came with the car. Thank heavens. Oh, rear climate control is quite nice. Yes, but it doesn't work. We don't know how to operate it. We've never well, got it. Well, it is right. blowing. It is. Is it cold? Yeah, it's cold. Is it? Yeah. Okay, good. It's working. <laughs> Um, any other things that make this not a Mercedes? Um, oh, the lights. If you look at the lights. Yeah, they're also, they're also different. And I think these are... Oh no, those are the reading lights. That's also... Yeah, because gone. in a Mercedes, all of this would be over here. It would be there. All yes. of your switch gear, because you would have a reading light. Yeah. Um, which only is on the driver's side. Yes, and all of that. So... Hmm. Yeah. <laughs> that's also not very Mercedes-Benz. No. The mirrors. That's... The design, it's... Because uh, the Mercedes-Benz, you usually have the glass in the middle, and you usually have, have, a, you have a thin light on each yeah. side. Oh, well. I think we can mount the camera again and get back to our... Yes. Um, ...summary. See, there, there's one of those red markings. Why isn't there one at 50? Or one on the red line? So bizarre. Boing. Oh! You're supposed to keep your foot on it. It doesn't make the clonking noise. Right. Um, we're going to sum up. Hey? Yeah, we can actually. Thank you so much for watching. Uh, do you have any questions, suggestions? Do you have an ML that has very high mileage, very low mileage, very cool spec, or you've built some sort of uh, off-roader or a um, Jurassic Park tribute car? Please let us know. <laughs> Send us a video or a photo. And just for interest sake, because we never got it, if you by any chance have a 400 CDI, please comment and let us know what it's like. How cool it is. That those are the mud flaps. Do you also have these shovel mud flaps that scrape everywhere? Let us know. But yes, the 400, I would be very, would, very interested in that. But otherwise, apart from going on to many tangents, thank you so much for watching. Um, I hope you found this to be very informative. The one or two things we were a bit iffy on, once again, in the comment section, please let us know. Yep. Uh, for example, like about the AMG kit. Yes. Was, it a, was it a factory option? If it was, in what country? Yeah. Um, and obviously, if it was not, there are quite a few companies in the late 90s, 2000s, especially in Europe, um, that made money by doing replica, very well made, but replica body kits yes. and so forth. So if it is a case of that also, let us know. I'm on an ML163 group on Facebook. There are people modifying them, dropping them, tinting them, putting big wheels on them. Not my thing, but very cool. No, I like it. But to each their own, as the saying. Uh, they're having fun with their cars, so that's all good. Thanks. And once again, thank you. And please watch our other documentaries on the on the engines. Next one is the 113. That'll be a big one. And we've got lots of other vlogs and blog, uh, documentaries. Yes. About cars. All right. Awesome. Thanks for watching. Cheers. Bye. Ik heb geen gezin, Moenie. Zij zal jouw bel van een cinema zijn.